Up next on the bottom line, Montgomery and Prince George's council members hold a joint meeting to discuss bi-county issues. A group of health tech startup companies bring their ideas to the big stage and a community project that aims to raise awareness about protecting our water. Thanks for watching everyone, I'm Susan Kennedy. At the headquarters of the Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission, Transportation and Environment Committee members from Montgomery and Prince George's counties met to discuss the Purple Line and WSSC issues. Both counties will be contributing significantly to the construction of the Purple Line, and MTA officials were on hand to answer a variety of questions on this multi-billion dollar project. The meeting took place exactly one day after the Board of Public Works approved a contract with a team of private builders to construct the 16-mile Purple Line. T&E Committee Chair Roger Berliner observed the step signaled a new day for both counties. Many people thought it would never happen, and now we have a signed agreement, and we are going to start digging dirt as of Monday on Elm Street. Purple Line Transit Partners will build the project that's estimated to cost more than $5 billion. The contractor will build and operate the light rail line that will run from Bethesda to New Carrollton. Things are going to start happening, uh, a project that's so critical to both counties' financial future, the quality of life is really going to make a big difference. Along the Purple Line corridor, what we're seeing is kind of revitalization of those areas starting. I think the Purple Line will um, expand that opportunity along those lines. Both Montgomery and Prince George's County will be kicking in millions of dollars in additional funding to the project. That said, council members say they will be staying on top of construction to be sure residents are not overlooked during the course of the build out. We slowed down the traffic on Wayne Avenue and just lowered the uh, speed limit from 30 to 25. Um, and there's going to be a lot of noise reduction, including some no temporary noise walls and others to make sure that the, the, uh, the bad effects of construction um, that you know are, are some of are unavoidable we want to mitigate that as much as possible and, and minimize the neighborhood impact of the construction the purple line was not the only topic of discussion at the meeting WSSC officials were on hand to update both councils on the budget and priorities of the bi-county agency council president Nancy Florine told the panel though she realizes infrastructure upgrades are necessary she's concerned about the potential for additional rate increases we've had significant uh, increases in WSSC rates over the years. I think they were, they were valid, but I'm at the point of saying enough is enough. And I've told w WSSC they have to examine their own house, look at their continuing costs, and look, make some hard decisions about that. There are more than 350 biotech companies and thousands of PhDs who call Montgomery County home. The county's business innovation network grows young entrepreneurs into thriving county employers to add to this statistic. Relevant Health is a new health tech accelerator, and recently they held an event where some of those innovators had the chance to demonstrate a wide range of health products to some would-be investors. Uh, workers' compensation. It was like a version of Shark Tank on a local level. Seven health startup companies pitching their commodities to a group of more than 150 potential investors, industry leaders, and technology executives at the Rockville Innovation Center. Who is Glucose Mama? What is Glucose Mama? Glucose Mama is the first digital therapeutic system for gestational diabetes. After five months of hard work, these select entrepreneurs brought their creative minds to the stage in hopes of being discovered as the next tool in the healthcare industry. So Gastro Girl is actually the first patient-centric telehealth platform that brings all the key elements of support to patients with um, gastrointestinal issues and conditions. Jacqueline Gallen started Gastro Girl as a blog in 2007. She's worked for the American College of Gastroenterology for the past six years. I want to show you the three key aspects of this. Here patients can find a registered dietitian with gastrointestinal expertise, with digestive health expertise. I had this vision of making this uh, come to fruition um, as more of a support system for patients. And I was fortunate to be accepted into Relevant Health Accelerator where I could actually build out the platform to help patients. There's so much information out there that's not validated. It's not something that is really geared towards the patient.
patient, sometimes it's frightening, sometimes it's to sell a product. GastroGirl would be a validated portal where patients can come and feel comfortable to discuss things and get information like gluten intolerance or what it means to have irritable bowel syndrome, what is bloating, what is gas, things that they might not feel as comfortable or have as much time to discuss with their health care provider. The companies were chosen out of a field of 80 applicants. Each was awarded $50,000 in funding to develop their product. Welcome to Gastro Girl. And in case you're wondering, we unveiled our site this morning and the first two people to sign up were men. <laughs> the five month program is intense. The curriculum is designed to give the entrepreneurs the skills to develop and launch a viable health tech product. The final piece that I want to show you that's really also very cool is our telehealth platform. Relevant Health partnered up with the county's Office of Economic Development, BioHealth Innovation, and Product Savvy to put on the event. During the interview process, you kind of shake your head and say, I don't know if this is going to make it. And then we had a, a mid-term presentation. We said, oh, they've come a long way. So I'm anxious to see how they come out today. My congratulations to you. Well, you look at our assets here. You look at NIH. You look at FDA. You look at the uh, in interaction that needs to occur between companies and their regulators and their funders. Uh, there's a workforce here. We have something like 5,000 postdocs in the STEM field who are willing and, and interested pipeline of researchers and uh, employees for these companies. So it's a, it's, it's a logical fit. Council President Nancy Florine says programs like this are key in growing the county's economic base. Montgomery County is all about innovation. It's all about creativity and it's all about creating a safe place where people can explore ideas and hopefully bring them to market. But it is a real um, statement uh, to the business community of how we're there for them. And it's a great statement to our community generally about how we want to be in the forefront. We want our people to be successful and we want to find avenues that are affordable um, and give them access uh, to the tools they need to really uh, create their own uh, pathways to the future. After learning that three million babies die in their first month of life each year, Teresa Cobell and Sona Shaw began working on Neopenda as graduate students in the biomedical engineering department at Columbia University. These 600,000 newborns in Uganda alone are in need of care from complications that happen at or around birth. We've developed a vital signs monitor that can measure heart rate, respiratory rate, blood oxygen, saturation, and temperature, all integrated into a baby hat. Um, and so the, the vital signs are wirelessly transmitted to a tablet. And so this is what it would look like if there are eight babies in the room. Um, so all of the vital signs are displayed and if any of them go out of range, then they start flashing like you see right here. If any of the vitals go out of range, then the nurses are alerted. We want to deploy a technology solution that will boost the impact of a single healthcare worker in an understaffed hospital. This team recently spent time in Uganda doing market and user research. We've both been passionate about global health for a long time and we sort of came up with this idea while we were in a design course as grad students at Columbia University. Um, and so this started as a project in the class. We started talking to different um, stakeholders in places like Uganda and doing research on this problem and sort of came to this solution of a vital science monitor. And thank you for your time and support. And, and the fact that you went through this rigor, rigorous process to get in, into this program, um, what are your hopes today? Oh gosh, well this is like a huge turning point for us to get to the end of Relevant Health. We're really happy to have our MVP, our product here to start testing and to start doing studies with. So we're kind of at a, a really cool acceleration point. After Demo Day, the Neopenda team started a Kickstarter campaign that raised $13,000 in 48 hours. And the other companies are all in discussions with potential investors and partners. Relevant Health plans on launching its second health tech accelerator this fall. For more information, visit their website at relevanthealth.md. The millions of people who live in the Chesapeake watershed affect its health in ways they may not even realize. Montgomery County's Department of Environmental Protection has numerous programs aimed at educating residents young and old about protecting the watershed. These storm drains are getting a new look thanks to some young Montgomery County environmentalists. It's a salamander um, and that's a puppy. I, I do really like painting. 
Yeah. It's really fun just well. being with each other and painting. I think it's it's been really fun and I've met so many new people and painting all these little things, it's so cool because I I like to think of myself as an artist. I love drawing and doing it in an outdoor environment during spring break is a really fun experience. They are painting the drains as part of a larger educational campaign on the hazards of putting waste materials into storm drains. The Department of Environmental Protection has been installing facilities that help clean our waters throughout the years. We are encouraging kids to become involved in protecting our water uh, and this is an opportunity to come out here, help us paint the storm drains that are feeding into uh, stormwater facilities and so that way people know that these are not just here for aesthetics but they're also helping clean our water. This particular group was using its talent on the storm drains at the Kensington Library. The storm drain art program aims to spread awareness about stormwater issues by engaging the community and protecting our water. Murals with a water quality message or theme are painted on the drains in hopes people will think twice before throwing something down the drain. I think this is important because eventually the water drains to uh, the Chesapeake Bay and that's where we get our fish and a lot of our water. Yeah, We don't want to get poisoned. I really want to bring awareness to everyone else who might not be aware of what they can do by not polluting. We're going to add some raindrops to just promote the water and Make how keeping our water clean is very important. Uh, it's a great way actually doing the whole painting to make people mindful of the environment. In keeping with the theme of the project, only environmentally safe paint is used on the storm drains. The paint is actually the same paint that is used to uh, mark uh, the roads. And the reason for that is because we don't want it to leak or we don't want it to uh, chip. And so the road paint we are we know that is has been around and it works. And there are no maintenance costs associated with the murals. They eventually fade after time when their outreach efforts have been accomplished. The county has selected several other sites like the Kensington Library where there is the potential for high traffic to see the works of art and appreciate the significance. Right now we have several of them. We have uh, two at the Aspen Hill Library. We have one at the White Oak Community Center. Uh, we've also partnered with commercial buildings or commercial properties that have issues with people either illegally dumping or putting stuff down the drains. And so that community, it's, it's a private storm drain but it's, it serves a very important purpose. From us painting that area, then there has been no complaints about illegal dumping in that storm drain. Council Vice President Roger Berliner chairs the committee that oversees environmental issues. He says projects like these at public places are a good idea. We're spending hundreds of millions of dollars over the next years to address stormwater issues. So to call attention to what's actually happening with rain, with stormwater, is so terribly important and they're doing a, a good public service. I seem passionate about it because I know that it will affect us, especially like in our future, if we don't take care of it now, then in the future there's going to be, it's going to be very hard for us to take care of it. And by making small steps, it will make a big difference in the long run. That's all the time we have for this edition of The Bottom Line. We leave you this week with our Montgomery moment. Sights and sounds from the gas and steam engine show that took place recently at the Agricultural History Farm Park. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. use this car exclusively so if you see the movie Jay Edgar every single shot except for the one in New York they're in this car so the car is the star not me